all I have to do is find this. This was a little magazine that was put out called War Guest. And my sister and I are in here. There we are, down the bottom there. In my little uniform. Pardon? Would you mind to hold it up uh, and I'll. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I'm just trying to find this one. Well, this, these are just some pictures. You know, they said you were interested. Is, uh, there's my mum when she was about 18. And uh, my, there's my, my dad there. These are just family family pictures. My grandfather. And and this this happened because family gets together after 41 years. We hadn't seen one another, been together for 41 years. And my mum came over. That's my mum there. And that was our that was our whole family. So that was something, you know. Did you want to see that? Sure. Okay. Ah. This is just an article about the sinking of the ship, the one that was sunk, the kids going to Australia. Ha 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 ha. What's this one? Oh, well, that's just, <laughs> maybe wouldn't be interesting, but that's my, that's my great grandfather and grandmother and that's my family there. <laughs> Did you want to see it? Sure. <laughs> Look at their funny hairstyles in there. Okay. Well, oh, come on, where are you? There's a there's a um, ration book that they had in Canada. But I think you got more than one egg a month. <laughs> and and this is just a, t a telegram I got saying they'd book my passage on the uh, Aquitania. Oh, here I here we are. That's me. <laughs> I was fourteen, I think. <laughs> and as soon as I heard my mum's voice, I just burst into tears and I cried the whole time. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I put the <coughs> names of the other children <coughs> on there. And those were just menus I saved um, from the ships. That was when we went back on the banana boat, the Fife, Fife Line, you know, and that's the one from the Aquitania. For dinner, we had poached fillets of sole, roast turkey and cranberry sauce. <laughs> Don't know what we had there, Quaker oats and And that's nothing to do with the war, that's just my great uncle Edward. No, that's just No. I think I've shown you Where's all those other Somewhere I've got other pictures. No, that's that's books. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't know where. Oh, here they are. 
These are old, old pictures of my, my family. That's, that's my mum and dad. So I don't, that, that's what we looked like before we were evacuated. That's my brother in there, but he didn't get evacuated. That's 1940. <laughs> Changed a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know if you're interested in seeing any of these other stuff. Or, as I say, that there's there's my mum when she was 18. There. And and this this is a picture when we went to Ostend. That clothes and everything, you know. I, I'm in the pram. <laughs> That's, yeah. And that's that's the house where I lived, detached, detached house. And that's just my dad's shop, doing hairdressing. Just more pictures on the beach with their funny, funny costumes. My grandfather. There we are along on the beach again. So that's it, I think. Okay. And I've got books there that, you know, tell you a lot about the, the children. We were called the forgotten children because you never heard about us. I went, I went on a trip once and there were people from the States and they said, um, where are you from? I said, Canada. I'm wearing my Canadian pin. They said, well, you don't talk like a Canadian, you've got a different accent. So I said, well, I was born in England, you know. So they said, well, how come you're here? So I said, well, I was evacuated. And they said, what do you mean, evacuated? They didn't know about children being evacuated. But some of those books there, they're, they've interviewed a lot of children, you know, and how it affected them. Some of the children didn't want to go back, and some of them parents didn't want them. So, you know, it was kind of sad. I think I've just about gone through everything. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, do you have any children? Do I have any children? I have two that I adopted, uh, a boy and a girl. I don't know where my son is, but um, the girl, she lives down in Woodstock, so I see her. But I don't have any family in, in Midland, just a lot of good friends. Because I, um, I I volunteer at the hospital, and I used to volunteer at Daskanonia Center for four years, you know. So I've always volunteered ever since I was about 20. I think it does you good to do something for other people, you know. So, Anyway, I was going to get one of these books here and show you. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. I forgot I was attached. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go back. Let's take that with you. You just put it on your lap or, or wherever you like. Okay. Looks like I... Who did I lose? These tiny, tiny little pictures. Oh, I think that's my mum and dad on their honeymoon. <laughs> There's all kinds of books about us. Here's one that's got a funny title, The Absurd and the Brave, and it's all about the true story of the children being evacuated. And uh, our names are in the back here. Well, that, that's a very interesting book. Here, here's another one called The Guest Children. Very interesting. And, and this one is kind of written as fiction, but it's called The Guests of War, a trilogy. It's all kids' viewpoints and stuff like that. And I know, here was some, I was reading this the other day, kids had to write home. My aunt, 
uh, always checked my letters before they went home in case I would say I was not having a good time or something, you know. But, um, and during the summer, I didn't tell you this, during the summer, she didn't really want us, you know, um, uncle did. And she said, um, children's aid used to send us to, I used to have a go and work looking after people's kids. And then when I was like 16, <clears throat> I got a bit rebellious too, because um, my friends in high school during the war were going to go in and uh, work in, in plants. So I told my aunt, I said, I'm not going to go and look after kids again this year. Uh, I want to go on and uh, go with my friends and work in, uh, you know, for the war. Well, she said, you're not staying here. So I asked my girlfriend's mother if I could stay with them. And she said yes, because she was from England. And so I went and worked. Uh, we were making something to do with Navy shells. You know, I was on an assembly line. So then it was shortly after that they sent me back to England. So I had to do my war bit, you know. So I think that's it. Why was it that uh, you and your sisters were sent, but your brother was stayed at home? Because he, he was too young, that you had to be five and over, and he was still wet in the bed. So that was one reason he he didn't go. Well, he's, he died um, oh, quite a number of years ago. Like he was, I was the eldest, the twins were two years younger than I was, and my little sister four, and then uh, my brother's eight years younger than I am, um, you know. But, uh, and I know some of our relatives were very annoyed because my mom couldn't tell them that we were going because, you know, subs chasing us and everything. So, anyway, I'm here, I survived. <laughs> and I, oh, I should tell you that in England, you know, people lived in, in shelters and things, but a lot of them lived in the subway. They had bunk beds down in the subway, and they all went down, like especially at Piccadilly, because when I used to have to go to work, um, they, I don't know how they slept there, but they, they went down and slept in the subway just to get away from the bombing. Never knew when they came up if their houses were there or anything, you know, because they were really bombarded night after night after night. I don't know how they, how they got through it, you know. Did that uh, last the whole war? Pardon me? Did the bombing go throughout the whole war, or did it? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Um, did the bombing that took place in Britain, did it go throughout the whole war, or did it stop? At, uh, if you said it went day after day, was there any point in the war for a long period of time where they weren't being bombed? Well, they, they, a lot of them, they would come and bomb at night, you know, hoping their people were in their beds, I guess. But uh, they had these big barrage balloons, and, and uh, you know, they could tell when the planes were coming over and you know I, I didn't I didn't live through that thank heavens but I know when I did go back I was going to visit my favorite aunt and I was on the bus and all of a sudden everybody disappeared they all went down under their seats and I, I'm the only one sitting up there what happened all of a sudden a big explosion one of those V1s had dropped right in the field next to where the bus was going so that's what the people were getting away from the glass I guess but I was so terrified, I don't know how I walked home, you know, I was just, oh. <laughs> and an another time, funny, they used to have bad fogs in England. And what with the blackout, I'd gone to a dance uh, at another little town. And um, there were Canadian Air Force guys there. And I was coming home uh, on the bus. And all of a sudden, the bus stopped. It had ended up in a cemetery because it couldn't, the fog was so thick and the bus only, only could have lights that shone down, you know, limited light. And so we had to get off the bus and I had to feel my way. You, you couldn't see that far in front of your face, you know, and it's like you're blind. And I had to go and feel my way along the, f figure out where I was and f finally get to my street and get home, oh, I was absolutely terrified. <laughs> but that's things that happen, you know. But you have to really think about it now, it's funny, but it wasn't so funny then. <laughs> and they don't have the fogs as bad now. 
because that was industry, you know. But 